Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Shaloa. I'm the programs associate here at Van Allen. Um, and I am joined by our director of programs, Andrew. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. So this is the info session for our 2024 Points of Promise um, open call and the initiative that we're doing here in Gowanus. Um, we're super excited that you all are joining us and that you're interested in the open call, interested in applying. Um, to give some context of kind of like an overview, um, I will go through this slide deck presentation, which is just supposed to give a general overview of the program, then we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, but if anyone has questions that come up as we're going through the presentation, feel free to put them in the chat. We do ask that just because we're recording that you mute yourself for this kind of presentation period so that when folks are going back and looking through the recording that it's easier, that it's easy for them to go through it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and dive in. To provide some context, I'm sure that some of you might be familiar with Van Allen as an organization, um, but Van Allen is a 130-year-old design nonprofit that creates more equitable cities through community-led inclusive design. Um, we started out as an architectural society way back when, 130 years ago, um, of artists, of designers and architects nerding out about the Beaux-Arts architecture style. Um, from there, we evolved into really thinking about thought leaders and activating public space around New York City. Um, and then four years ago, we had a mission shift um, and Deborah Martin came on as our executive director to really think about what community-led inclusive design looks like and what it meant for us to utilize the network of incredible designers, architects, artists, lawyers, and folks of the allied, uh, allied professions um, that have been supporting the work that Van Allen had been doing. How could we leverage that network to support the work of incredible community organizations across New York City and across the boroughs um, that were doing really integral and important work in their communities? I mean, how could we support their desire to activate, to activate public space, do something differently, reimagine or envision what their neighborhoods look like or a certain part of their neighborhood or activating a space or tackling an issue in which a designer, an artist, a design team might be able to support um, and help bring vision to. To give a bit more of context on the Points of Promise initiative, um, it really was birthed out of a lot of the work. I have to give credit to our director of programs, Andrew, um, did when we first, we moved our office to Gowanus about four years ago. Um, and for those who don't know, um, 2020, 2021 um, is when the rezoning went through in Gowanus. So Gowanus was rezoned from industrial manufacturing to residential. So if you're ever in the neighborhood today, you as you were walking up the street, it will look entirely different a week later um, because there's a ton of construction going on in the neighborhood. Um, there's a lot um, of changes. There's a lot of high rises going up. Um, and due to the work of a lot of community activists and community organizing in the neighborhood, um, when that rezoning was kind of being negotiated or brought in before city council, um, they really advocated for current residents to be able to benefit from the rezoning. What was the city going to do um, to ensure that residents here um, felt safe, welcomed, but also that improvements were being made to the existing infrastructure here um, to also accommodate all the folks that would be moving. Um, so with that came the 56 points of agreement. Um, it is a very long document um, that has a lot of different, that kind of details all of those different, essentially like promises that the city council made um, to residents of Gowanus. They include everything from the Gowanus Canal cleanup uh, to flooding infrastructure, to um, housing, or not housing, but um, to money going towards NYCHA housing, Gowanus houses, Wyckoff Gardens. Um, and it's a long list of, of different promises that were made. Um, so this program is really built in response to the rezoning. And I think a lot of what um, was heard in regards to while we were talking to different community organizations in the neighborhood, from the Canal Conservancy to go on as mutual aid to the oversight task force of what would be helpful um, to support kind of the neighborhood and what people, what people knew, what people didn't know was how could Van Allen as a design nonprofit help support kind of like the visual by providing visual aids, community engagement tools. How could we utilize our network to support that work and kind of bring vision so that it's not, or not bring vision, but kind of elevate community vision for like what's going on in the neighborhood, what was promised um, in a way that was meaningful, intentional, and does more than 
um, just those kind of like 56 points in that document? How do you make that something that people actually engage with um, in a way that's meaningful and intentional? Um, so it's really collaboration with Kiwanis community leaders. Um, and we call for projects that help local advocates keep their neighbors informed about the ongoing impacts of the Kiwanis rezoning. And this multi-year initiative explores the value of public art and design as a supportive tool for information sharing in the public realm, community organizing, issue advocacy, and social justice. And pictured here is the prototype of the 2023 winner, um, winner's project, which is With Your Voice by Juan Lee Carrion and Rodolfo Casulas. Um, they are Brooklyn-based artists that actually like, lived in the neighborhood, and Juan Lee actually teaches about the rezoning in Gowanus. Um, and they were tasked with kind of thinking about how do you take those 56 points of agreement and put them in front of people in a meaningful and intentional way. So they actually created these viewfinders that people can look through, and as you click through them, you can see the different um, renderings and information on what's coming to the neighborhood. So they're all site-specific. Specific. There's 11, um, and those will go out sometime later this spring slash early summer um, for people to click through and then see what's coming to the neighborhood, but also what points of agreement um, are tied um, to that specific um, that specific site. So, for example, you might be at like Thomas Green Park, and you might be able to click through and see what renovations are coming to the park and what point of agreement is associated with it. Um, so really thinking about it as like a community engagement tool, but also public information sharing and how to get the information out there in a way that's maybe like playful or whimsical or a bit different from just that document that has those 56 points of agreement listed. So getting into the 2024 project, we decided um, after like talking to different community organizations, folks in the neighborhood, um, the, our, the first iteration of the project was really thinking about the points of agreement at large. And now we're thinking about what it means to kind of hone in um, on specific topics as we continue on this multi-year initiative. So this year's topic is really flooding. Um, so we're inviting artists and designers to help increase public awareness of the evolving risk and impact of flooding in Gowanus. And the proposed project should consider at least one of the following. So how do current residents manage living in the flood zone? How might the threat of flooding evolve and impact Gowanus communities in the future? And how might you reach potential future residents of Gowanus about the risks of flooding? And the proposals um, that folks are invited to share um, should engage local community stakeholders and Gowanus residents in a meaningful way. Um, so at this stage with the open call, we are not asking for proposals. We're kind of just asking for folks to kind of toss their hat in the ring. So if you are an artist, designer, um, or part of a studio that has a background in thinking about public information sharing or community engagement or just an artist with a community engaged practice. Um, we're inviting folks to self nominate and submit to that open call. Um, and after once the open call closes, we'll review all the submissions and from there the selection committee will decide what three artists and designers are invited um, to submit a proposal and those proposals um, folks will be paid for their work that'll be $2,000 for each proposal that we receive. Um, yeah. So moving forward, um, I jumped the gun a bit there, but so the 2024 open call, some of the criteria that we're really looking for, um, we're looking for folks that have at least two years of professional experience as an artist, have completed at least two public facing or community engaged projects, have a practice based in New York, in the New York City area, and we're especially encouraging um, Gowanus based artists and artists that have been impacted um, by flooding in the neighborhood here or like in other neighborhoods across New York City, um, or especially encouraging those folks to apply, to apply those who are personally impacted. Um, I will share that I think something that was super helpful and made a strong case for um, the previous winners was they, they they had a strong background of doing community engaged projects and kind of evidence um, in, pre, in prior projects that they've worked on. Um, so having that in your background, I think is helpful when applying and in the open call when it asks for you to like submit links of previous work, seeing that in your background is super helpful and something that the selection committee definitely looks at. And then jumping into the design criteria. So if you're invited to submit a proposal, this kind of just goes deeper into like what exactly um, the proposal is asking you to do. Um, so these questions really just build off of those first initial three questions that we asked. Um, so thinking about like Gowanus right now, um, and in the past, like how do residents currently deal with living in the flood zone? What are their stories? Is it possible to make their experiences along with the physical impacts of flooding more visible? Looking ahead, how might the threat of flooding evolve over time in Gowanus? How might the neighborhood and com neighborhood's communities be impacted in the future? And how might 
um, your piece inform the public of efforts led by community groups and or city leaders to help Gowanus manage water and bounce back from flooding? And then um, there's a lot of new construction in Gowanus's flood zone. How might you reach potential future residents about flooding in Gowanus in addition to long-term residents? Um, so as you'll see here, there's these questions are kind of broken up in three different categories. Almost the first one is really thinking about current residents, people that already live here. What are their stories? How do they deal with flooding? Um, the second one is starting to kind of look ahead in regards to, we know, with sea level rise, with environmental change, how has that risk of flooding kind of evolved? And then the third one is thinking about all the construction and all the change that's currently going on in the neighborhood. Kind of like, what is the infrastructure going up already? Um, and are new residents aware of kind of like what's happening that they're moving into a flood zone um, and what it looks like here in Gowanus. Um, I'm sure for those of you that might be familiar in the neighborhood or live in the neighborhood, you might be familiar with the whirlpool that we had last October when it flooded. Um, so for folks that are new residents that are newly moving in, like are they aware of uh, what the flooding can look like here? And thinking about the design criteria, so we are really form agnostic with this project. So the proposal can range in anything from a poster campaign to a big physical installation. Um, it can be visual, performance, new media. We're really open to anything. The only requirement um, is that proposals have to make current and incoming residents um, aware of the evolving and shifting risk of flooding in Gowanus. And we really seek projects that inform the neighborhood, match advocacy with beautiful form, engage vulnerable, often overlooked communities, help neighbors build connections, create avenues for collective local action, build on the neighborhood's existing civic power, involve neighborhood youth, and can, we encourage folks to consider the afterlife of the project. So we know that even though this is a temporary installation, it's usually up um, for about two months. We encourage the artists and designers to think early on, and we're happy to help with this process of thinking what the afterlife looks like, whether that be a website, documentation of it, or if it's a physically built thing, can it live someplace else in the neighborhood? Can it live someplace else in Gowanus, even after that two-month period is up? Um, yeah, I think that, and something else that I'll share is I know that there's a lot of information that exists um, on flooding in Gowanus and in the RFP, we also include additional resources um, about flooding in Gowanus, the infrastructure that's going up, kind of like the history of what's happened in the neighborhood. Um, but the goal for the project is not to overwhelm people with all of this information. Like we, we're not looking for a pro like it's not the artist's responsibility to take in every single thing about flooding in Gowanus and then like regurgitate it back out at everyone in the neighborhood. I think that would just be overwhelming for everyone. Um, but to really think about how you can create a project with enough intrigue that opens the door for people to learn more, um, that kind of like creates an avenue for people to be interested in what's going on in the neighborhood, in the status of flooding, in the infrastructure that's here, or in like what's coming to the neighborhood. Um, and really you're just like opening the door and creating something that's a different avenue rather than looking at a form online or a document online that explains the flooding to kind of introduce people to the topic and inviting them to learn more about it. And I think that's where the community engagement component of it is really beautiful as well, because it provides the opportunity for um, artists and designers to connect with like residents here, with community members, with community organizations. There's so many incredible community organizations like the Juanis Canal Conservancy that already hold like a lot of these resources. Are there ways to like connect with them, collaborate with them so that if you create a piece that opens the door, um, then maybe there's ways to like um, utilize some of their resources, some of the work that already exists um, so that people then have access to that or have easy means and ways of finding the existing amount of information. Um, that lives online and in other places throughout the neighborhood. So who exactly sits on the selection committee, just to give some context and like for transparency, we're still in the process of forming the 2024 selection committee, um, but the previous year's selection committee um, was representative um, of the neighborhood, of different community organizations um, and stakeholders in the neighborhood. Um, so Gowanus Houses Tenants Association, Gowanus Mutual Aid, the Oversight Task Force, the Gowanus Canal Conservancy um, are just like some of the organizations or like folks who had, um, the folks that were on the selection committee, committee participated or have roles at those organizations. Um, so we really look for a, um, a diverse pool that's reflective of the different organizations that are doing important work in the neighborhood, but also are knowledgeable on the topic at hand. So last year's being like the overall points of agreement. And this year we're really thinking about about flooding um, and who has some sort of expertise or connection to flooding, CSO, the combined sewage overflow in the neighborhood, um, and can 
and provide that insight and light when we're looking at proposals. But the selection committee was also incredibly helpful last year after the winner was selected. Sometimes uh, the winning artist and designer have questions or they have folks they want to connect with. And the, there were folks on the selection committee that were really helpful for bridging those gaps, helping to make those connections um, in the neighborhood and also provide resources where they were needed. And then to give some insight on the timeline for the projects, the deadline for the open call is April 26th. Um, and then from there, May 3rd is when an invitation will be sent out to three artists and designers to put together proposals. Folks will have a little bit over a month with those to put those proposals together and they'll be due on June 7th. Um, and then in late June, um, the winning artists will be selected and contracted with the selection committee. Um, and then July to September is really when production and fabrication of the project is taking place. Um, obviously, production and fabrication looks different depending on the nature of the project, whether it's new media or physical installation, um, but the time period for working on it is really July to September, um, and then the project launches late September or early October. Uh, yeah, and we're envisioning that um, we're in the process of, um, we usually do a block party sometime in the fall, so that kind of sits as a natural um, opportunity to really highlight and showcase the project, and it'll be up from late September, early October through mid-December. Yeah, I think that is it. Um, that was a lot of information that I just threw out there. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, at this point, feel free to, to unmute yourself um, and just go ahead and toss it out there. And Andrew and I will do our best to answer your questions. What do we need to submit for the... Uh, stage of the competition. Thank you very much, Shiloh, by the way. Oh, yeah, of course. So for the open call, I think Andrew just dropped it in the chat. It's really, it's meant to be like a 10-minute form max. So it's just like who you are, a little bit of your background, and like links to projects. Or like if you don't have, let's say you don't have a website, you don't have a link to a specific project. If you create like a a Google Doc and like want to share it with us and like drop the link in there for like information on the project. That's perfect and that works as well. Um, so yeah, it's really just like basic background information, where your studio is located, a little bit of background on you, why you're interested in the project, um, and then examples of previous projects that you've done. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> thank you for that. It was very helpful. Um, to get background. Um, I had a few questions um, with respect to the engagement aspect of it. Um, mm -hmm. Has there been engagement around flooding that Van Allen has done that the artists can build on? And, um, and particularly with young people, have there been youth that Van Allen has engaged with that the artists can also sort of build off of? I'm just really trying to see if there are like networks already established that can be built upon, or will the artist be expected to start to seek out those connections when they're doing the work? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think, Andrew, I actually wanted to ask if you wanted to talk about Glowanus a little bit. I think that's a good. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I can speak directly to the FOMO's question too. Like through Van Allen, we don't have those direct relationships, um, but through the community organizations, particularly the Canal Conservancy and the Dredgers, who we are directly connected to, um, there is a lot of like past work that's been done. Um, not just like accumulating information around like flooding and water management, but also just community engagement and like relationships that the artists could leverage. And we're definitely happy to, to build those bridges as needed. Um, and then Chilo was referencing a project that we've done um, with a couple of residents who participated in our fellowship program a couple of years ago called Glowanus. It was an art, art installation um, attached to um, CSO issues. And it's kind of like a public awareness campaign around CSO in the neighborhood. Um, we definitely leaned on them, the two community members that we worked with, and tried to uh, connect them with this project as well. So again, like it's um, the community has been engaged through Van Allen's work in a number of different ways. I don't want to promise like, okay, we've got this group of fifth graders that we will connect you with directly. Um, but we have been connected enough with individual community members and um, uh, community organizations that are engaged with this issue, engaged with the neighbor in the issue that we can help you 
build that bridge if necessary. Um, but we do expect uh, in the proposals that we get for people to share, like if you want that to be um, a really rich part of your project and we expect people do, that you think through at least conceptually how it works, right? Um, and if during, because the proposals we paid, we're offering $2,000 per proposal. Um, again, we can help with this. Uh, you want to reach out to, again, some of the organizations that have been taking a lead on this issue. Um, just to test out some of your ideas and say like, hey, if we work with some of the communities that you've engaged, do you think they would you know, be interested in this particular approach or not? Why not? Um, we're happy to do that too. And we reached out particularly to the Canal Conservancy about helping us on the selection committee this time. So they served last year and they're helping us out with, uh, with the selection process this year. So I'm pretty confident that they'd be down to speak certainly with the invited artists just fit all the ideas around, you know, engagement, you know, approaches to that and so on and so forth. Um, thank you so much. It was really informative. I have a question about the application. Is it encouraged to have just one um, application as one artist or can we form a team? you're welcome to form a team um yeah um i think that yeah there's no like strength or uh, anything against anyone for like team or studio or individual like we um we we accept them all and like yeah the team well the folks that won last year were a duo like a team so um okay. yes and in filling out the application only one person needs to fill it out um but you can just kind of indicate like if you're a studio and the other members that are um a part of the team Okay, great. Thank you. And just really quickly on the fee, um, it's two thousand dollars per proposal that gets submitted, not per team member. Just want to be clear. So if you've got like a team of three or four people, um, it will be two thousand dollars for the one proposal that gets submitted collectively. Um. <clears throat> so I have um another question about just um implementation uh you know sent, pa past the application process the artist gets selected and i'm assuming this is stuff that will be implemented in the public realm so streets or parks does van allen have a relationship with the parks department or dot to support you know a lot of that application process that needs to happen it, would it be the artist submitting the application or would it be Van Allen, or would it be the the um, Gowanus Canal Conser Conservancy? Um, yeah, I'm just asking about like negotiating all of that process of actually like implementing something in public space. Yeah, Van Allen helps with that process as like, the producer of the project. Um, definitely with like uh, making connections and facilitating the approval process through DOT and parks. Um, DEP, I think would probably would be a likely candidate. For working with on this as well and Chilo, i don't know if you want to get into the particulars because Chilo, as project manager has really been running point on making those connections particularly with the 2023 installation um like i don't want to talk out of turn Chilo, but i will say based on that experience uh parks has been an eager partner <laughs> and being willing to host um as like a potential uh, site or being serving as a potential site for the installation and of course like van allen and Chilo again like chime in with um, any observations I thought you have on this. But while we can definitely help the artist navigate those processes, right? Like find the right form and like stay up to date with the um, the timeline and handle like the back and forth, right? It's like staying on top of the, the conversation. Ultimately, like we can facilitate, but we can't really expedite, right? Like we can't um, we can't make DOT host something that they don't want to host. So if if they green light something, it will be because your concept and your form aligns with what they will allow through their art interventions program or whatever other program that you would have to work with to get your piece installed on their um, on the land that they control. So that's something you have to keep in mind. But regardless, again, as Van Allen is the producer of this project, we expect and we are happy to serve that role as a um, bridge between the artists and whatever agencies they need. Um, to work with to cite their project however they feel is appropriate again with a caveat that like we can't make an agency do something 
-hmm. we can follow up with them we can stay on top of them but we can't make them green light something that they want they decide they won't do anything mm -hmm. um, got a three-part equipment uh three-part question for you um I, <laughs> who have you been most conversational with at GCC and the dredgers uh just who's interested there that I should be talking to uh yeah we reached out to um uh Andrea Parker okay the ED um who's gonna help us on the selection committee this year uh Diana Gruberg helped out last year too um and then on the dredgers uh we've been in contact with uh Owen and Celeste but mostly I would say Owen okay who's been like pretty helpful with some information um what I I would also say like I, I'd love to be um respectful and conscientious of their time sure so I think what uh maybe we can think about the process on our end but uh rather than having them get like a ton of questions from many different people it might be good for people to go through us first and then we funnel the questions over to them um, just so that they're getting everything at once um yeah sorry go ahead no it's yeah. okay uh, oh. sorry. sorry i was i'm nope. just going to add to it real quick i'll also emphasize that for the open call per portion when you're self-nominating i'd really encourage everyone to like take a look at the form because in that form you're actually not submitting a proposal yet or even an idea yet you're really just kind of like throwing your name and like some of your background into the ring and that's kind of what we're deciding off of it's only the three that are selected to submit proposals um that will actually be submitting proposals so like that the actual form that you're filling out might ask about like your connection to the neighborhood um previous work you're doing but it's not asking for a proposal yet and it's really not even asking for an idea yet okay and um then um <laughs> have you reached out to anybody uh, with um thomas green park friends of thomas green park uh and i'm I'm involved with them too, so I'm I'm just curious if uh, okay, yeah, no. TGP enters into it, or if there is someone else in parks within the Gowanus area, uh, Old Stone House, or anything that you you've that knows what you're trying to do here, and yeah, yeah, I mean, we reached out to um, Old Stone House particularly. I think we've had trouble connecting with friends of Thomas Green, to be honest. Um, I, I could facilitate that if you want to talk with them because they're they're sort of ground sent zero on the remediation too. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, that, that's sure. it. Yeah, if we, if we want to follow up like post call. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I just have a, a question about, um, so again, post application process, the, the amount is $50,000 for artists to use, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is, is there, is that all to be used for the project itself or can some of that be used to compensate people for their time? So the intent is for some of that to be used for folks to compensate their own time. Okay. Um, we've left it up to the, um, artists and designer that are that's selected to kind of determine what that what that split looks like between what they use to pay themselves and what they use for the project. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, one quick thing I wanted to add about the permitting um, piece. Um, everything that Andrew said was a thousand percent accurate. I'll just add that um, again for this open call portion, there's no question about site selection. But for those that are invited to submit a proposal, you will be asked to start to think about potential think to think about potential sites. Um, and again, Andrew and I are happy to. Um, kind of be a, a a sound board or even I think we have a map that's linked that has kind of we've done like work because we've worked on this project now for we did the program last year as well we made connections with a lot of different folks in the neighborhood and the community um, around like potential sites what the process looks like so when it comes time to like think about sites figure out sites determine sites um, just flagging that that's something that we encourage folks to think about when they're submitting the proposal so that way when 
and project is, is green, greenlit, we kind of know immediately, like if you're working with, if you want to work with DOT, if you want to work with parks, we already know what that process looks like and can help and support that process. Because most of those organizations will also ask, or agencies will ask for um, a partner organization with an artist. So like Van Allen would be the natural partner organization for those applications. Um, does Van Allen have like um, membership with materials for the arts that the artists could leverage? Oh, you said like um, like if we were connected with uh, materials for the arts, I'd say uh, no, <laughs> not at the moment. But we do have um, Shaloa has been connecting with fabricators. Okay. Yeah, and um, reaching out to people to see who's willing to support a civic arts project like this, basically, mm -hmm. on either like a pro bono basis or a reduced rate, um, or at the very least, just getting a network of um, fabricators together who are aware that we're doing this, mm -hmm. and they're aware of the timing, um, and they're willing to be supportive of us and the artists that, that get selected. So you're not starting from you know, a total scratch, trying to find someone who can help. Um, and obviously, like the that's a connection with both like labor and material, mm -hmm. right? Um, but no, to answer your question, we don't we don't have a direct partnership with uh, materials for the arts. Okay. Have to go. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, well, I think that is it. If anyone has any follow-up questions that come up, please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is here, but also on the webpage for the open call. If you scroll down under like contact, my email is also listed there. Um, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, yeah, and again, that that open call form, it's pretty straightforward. It really shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. And I think, again, something that we're really looking for is like, what are the past and previous projects that you've worked on? Um, yeah, and to also, I know someone asked about applying as a team. Um, feel free to submit work that you all have done as a collective or a team before, or if there's certain individuals that have strength in doing like community engaged work or community projects, feel free to link the work of uh, different members that are a part of the team or the studio that you're applying as. All right. Cool. Andrew, did I miss anything? No, I think that's good for now. I mean, obviously you have Shaloa's email on there too. I'll drop my email in there really quickly in the chat. If you have any questions at any point about the form or any questions that are, um, are on it, like Shaloa said, please reach out. Okay.